Um, Rhode Island is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, and I want to thank you, Assistant Attorney General Olson, for being here today. Uh, one of the more dire threats we're seeing to our national security is coming from within our borders. In recent years, we've seen a rise in domestic terrorism and hate crimes across the country. And in fact, an analysis by the Center for Strategic and International Studies showed that domestic terrorism in 2020 was at the highest level in nearly three decades. Since 2005, right-wing extremists have been involved in 267 domestic terror plots or attacks and responsible for 91 deaths, according to the Senate. And this has included countless racially motivated attacks, mass shootings and killings, including early this year in Buffalo, New York, and El Paso, Texas in 2019, and at the Tree of Life Synagogue in 2018, and too many other places to name, instilling great fear and even insecurity among the American people. The National Security Division uh, and your work is incredibly important to the defense of the homeland, not only from foreign threats, but from domestic ones as well. Which brings me to my first question. Attorney General Garland and Secretary of Homeland Security Mayorkas have both testified that the greatest domestic threat facing the United States comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. How has the DOJ modified its intelligence and prosecution apparatus since the beginning <clears throat> of the Biden administration to prioritize terrorist activity by white supremacists, white nationalists, and anti-government groups in the United States uh, responsible for the kind of violence I just described? Sure. I, I, look, the, the, we are threat-driven at the National Security Division and across the Justice Department. So we respond to the nature of the threats that we see and the way the FBI and the rest of the intelligence community characterizes those threats. They include threats from international terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS, but increasingly we've become concerned about groups that are based in the United States. Um, those groups run the gamut in terms of ideology and mix of ideology. But I guess my question is, what, why has the DOJ struggled to investigate and prosecute these threats? So I, what I would say for our part, what we did in the National Security Division was to establish a, a, a specialized unit within our counterterrorism section this year uh, to focus on domestic terrorist threats and domestic violent extremists, to make sure, one, that we have the right data because that's a challenge to understand the nature of the threat, to make sure that we have prosecutors dedicated to that effort, and also to make sure that we are focusing on violence and not First Amendment protected activities, because of course, one of the concerns is that an individual may espouse hateful rhetoric, um, uh, racist rhetoric, anti-government rhetoric, but that's protected by the First Amendment. Our concern is when that, those views cross over into criminal acts, such as acts of violence. Um, I want to ask you a, a question about a piece of legislation, the American Innovation and Choice Online Act. This is bipartisan legislation that promotes competition, innovation, and consumer choice online. In its letter of support, a very strong letter of support, the Department of Justice explained that the gatekeeper power of dominant platforms threatens our economic leadership and resiliency, and that by reigning in this power, uh, our legislation will help promote America's dynamism and competitiveness. Some opponents of the bill have falsely claimed it could harm our national security, or that the legislation has not been properly vetted for national security considerations. But isn't it true that the Justice Department's support of this bill reflects the entire department's views, including those of the National Security Division? And as head of the National Security Division, do you have any national con security concerns about the legislation? Yes, I'm certainly aware of the legislation, and, and uh, also that uh, we have, at the department have submitted a views letter in support of the bill, and that views letter reflects the input of my division, the National Security Division. Um, I also know that the bill contains a number of provisions that are designed to address the types of concerns that were raised about and are being raised about national security. And I look forward to working uh, if there are additional changes that need to be made to address uh, any, any, uh, any additional national security concerns. Thank you. And finally, terrorism in the form of mass shootings has become increasingly prevalent in the United States. 2021 saw nearly 700 mass shootings, the most since uh, the Gun Violence Archive began tracking them in 2014. Um, does the DOJ view these attacks as part of a broader domestic extremist terrorism problem? And how does the DOJ incorporate the prevention of mass shooting into its national security work, if it does at all? So the, 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 the challenge of mass shootings, um, uh, tragic uh, as we've seen, spans across the Department of Justice, right? The criminal division, the Civil Rights Division, and the National Security Division. When we have uh, instances of, of a mass shooting that's a, that is motivated by uh, political views or ideology, that falls into the category of domestic 
terrorism. Uh, that might be something, that would be something then that the National Security Division works on. We often work in coordination with the Civil Rights Division because it has the uh, jurisdiction over hate crime statutes, and many of these cases are prosecuted through hate crimes. What I can say, which I think is obvious, is that uh, easy access to military-grade weapons increases the likelihood that individuals who are extremists and hold extremist views and seek to carry out acts of violence are able to do so on a, on a more significant scale. Thank you. I feel back.